you haven't heard of a moon gate, it is simply a doorway or arch that is completely circular. And my now lovely wife wanted to get married under one. So what you're seeing here is the process of making the mold for this particular moon gate. The method that I decided to go with was bent lamination, which is using a bunch of thin plies glued together in order to maintain a curved shape. It's one of the two methods of bending wood. So what you're seeing here is the mold. It was a total of 16 pieces. It would have been really tough to get it as a perfect circle, but the CNC made quick work of this. It's honestly really fun to watch. You can see this little pop out of the roller baron just doing its thing. Probably about six and a half hours of cutting time overall. It was done over two days. Once all of these were cut out, there was some cleanup that happened off camera. I unfortunately wasn't able to film everything. But after that, I decided to add a little bit of EPDM rubber. This is actually roll roofing um, that was left over from my job and just put a little bit of that on the form to soften up the edges so that it would apply even pressure over the plies. The next step is making the plies. They're made out of some ash lumber. They're about a quarter inch thick. And a little hiccup I had when I was making this is that the plies for the moon gate, if they were going to be almost all the way around that eight foot circumference, they had to be 22 feet long. And the best I had was a little over eight feet long pieces of eight quarter lumber. And so I ended up having to lap joint these and glue them together. And you can see how ridiculously long these things were. They ended up being three total pieces. So the form also was massive. It had to be eight by eight feet. The only place that I could really fit this thing was in my living room. So using some cheap construction grade half inch plywood, laid everything out and started to screw it all together. You're seeing here that it is elevated. I'm actually screwing everything in from the back of the plywood. And then you're seeing me adding that rubber again to the outside of the mold there. I had to do a little bit of workshopping, but eventually I came up with this solution, which is just a clamp mounted on a caster wheel in order to press the plies into the mold. We used a urea formaldehyde glue, which is supposed to prevent slipping once it is done gluing up. And basically what we did is we just worked it around the mold. As you can see, this took a ton of clamps. Thankfully, my friend Sam was around to help out. Having an extra set of hands was absolutely invaluable. Probably took me a good 30 minutes to take all the clamps off of it after about 24 hours. I gave it a really good amount of time to set up because I didn't want it to do something called spring back. A lot of times when you pull a bent lamination out of a form, if it's really under stress, which this one kind of was, it can spring back. Cleaning this thing up took all kinds of scraping and hand planing, checking for square. It was a lot of work, but I think it turned out pretty fantastic. In hindsight, it probably would have been best to use some thinner plies, but given that I had to do those lap joints, it ended up just being fine to do those five plies. I think it did actually cut down on the amount of scraping that I had to do, which you can see took quite a while here, probably a good eight hours of scraping, sanding, hand planing, checking for square, all of that good stuff. So you see a tiny clip of sanding here. I did not end up filming much of this, but the next step was to trim off the bottom with a friend's track saw and get it ready to mount on the base. Now the base wasn't something that I got many clips of, so you're just gonna have to take my word for it. It is a plywood base that was laminated together, gave it a nice bevel on the edges. And then because I didn't want this thing to fall over, I made sure to make the space really, really heavy by laying in some flat metal from my work. They were just leftover roofing scraps. So the base that you're seeing there actually weighs about 80 pounds. Bailey's just checking my work. The next step was to put in these threaded inserts. They were the way that I was holding down this moon gate. In hindsight, it probably wasn't the best system. And you can see I added those little wings on there in order to help out and screwed them down with some machine screws. For finish, I decided to go with a spar urethane. It's a really good, fairly cheap waterproof finish. It didn't need to be particularly fancy. This thing ends up getting covered in flowers as you'll see in a second, but I put three coats on there because I wanted it to be nice and waterproof. And with that, 
it was done. So it is T minus three days to the wedding and the garage is kind of a mess because we kind of, we moved some of the big stuff out of here, but it's just a disaster. Yesterday, I was playing around with a little project in here and decided to open this garage door and the moon gate is in here. Let me show you what happened. This moon gate standing up is definitely taller than this by about a foot. And it decided to catch it and crack it pretty badly right here. So I've glued it back together. Um, thankfully it looks pretty good. I can't even tell exactly where the cracks were even though I remember them. And the other bummer is we got a little cracking down there on the base as well as this guy over here. It tore off this guy, kind of beat it up a little bit, um, ripped out a couple of the inserts. So I'm smashing those back into place. But long story short, I have always said, and I'm going to eat my own words, that the mark of a good woodworker is the ability to fix your mistakes.